Howdy, y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I've been getting several questions lately about this super splitter, and uh, so I just thought I'd do a review on it, talk about it a little bit. Uh, I've had it close to two years, not quite two years. This is the J model, and uh, I haven't had a second's worth of trouble out of it. But you can tell some of the paint is wore off of it, but that's that's just from being used. Uh, it's had a lot of wood run through it and I didn't clean it up for the video because I'll I'll be using it soon I, I'm not entering in any uh, contest for show it's just a, it's a tool you know all I've done to it is change the oil grease the rack sharpen the wedge every now and then and uh, and that's pretty much it um, I did there's a there's a bearing on the inside here it's a bronze looking barren and mr paul at super splitter advised me to change that once a year when you change the oil in the motor so i i uh i bought an extra bump stops in here i'll show you i'll get you closer here in just a minute and show you i bought an extra roller bearing a couple extra bump stops and i bought that uh bronze bushing not that it needed replacing but he said it'd be wise to have uh, that bearing uh, soaking in motor oil. And every once a year when I change the oil, just let it soak. And that's what I did. So uh, that's about it. Uh, it's real easy to get through. If you want to pull that out and grease this bearing here that everybody talks about, that's the main thing. If you go to the website, it has a tab that says the bad news. And it's talking about how you have to keep this clean. And it's, I wouldn't even call it bad news. I mean, it's its not much trouble at all. And I'll show you some things I keep with me uh, to make that easy. Uh, one thing, I keep this 9 16 socket. I loosen these bolts up here every now and then. I mean, it's, it doesn't happen often, but every now and then. You'll get a splinter hang up under this plate and you just back the you don't even have to remove them completely you just back them off get your splinter out what that does is hinder the return uh, it just gets wedged in there and, it, and it, it won't return you just back them off it doesn't take any time at all but i like having things handy in case that happens so i just keep this ratchet and socket in my in my tool bucket there uh, also 7 16 ratchet I keep it in there and that's for these the hood to take it off which I rarely have to do I'll do it sometimes if I want to get in there to, to clean the trash out like I said I, I just I don't do it very often but I like having my tools handy for it um, I do keep this little hatchet actually my daddy gave one of my sons is there's there's another one in there too he gave each of my sons a hatchet which is uh they're they're very young they, they probably don't need a hatchet but uh we'll let them play with it uh under supervision of course they just chop up little little things keep their hands away but man i keep this quite a bit especially working with stringy wood and uh i can just i can just reach down here and if i got a splinter or something i'll just chop it and and roll on uh, I'll show you you can see I've added some things to hold a pick a room uh, just different different little modifications I've did I, I've done excuse me and I'll walk you around and, and show you a couple other little things right now one thing I added was uh, the sleeve this receiver hitch sleeve I call it and if you'll see on some of the other ones the hitches come right on the ground sitting on the ground and i wanted it up a little bit just to make it easier to grab up under there and uh the ground out here is a little uneven you can see i use wood chips everywhere just to keep my firewood clean and and keep it out of the mud so what i'll do is pull that pin and i can take it out and split right up to my totes or or wherever i'm at and then, of course, when I want to move it again, I just slip it in there. And it, it gives me more leverage when I go to pick it up and move it around. So it, it works really good. That, that has been a, something I've added. It does add a little more weight, but 
I can remove it. Uh, I just put me some clamps here on the side to help hold pickaroons. Something I didn't mention earlier is I always keep a scraper to keep that bean clean right here. Uh, that's a that's like I was mentioning earlier. That's the main thing about these. But seriously, they're they're no trouble. You can uh, slide that rack out, pull this handle up here, and it'll stay in that position. You can clean your bearing out. Spray it with WD-40. Keep it clean, and it's not like you have to do it every five minutes. It's just whenever you, you see trash build up. I put this little bucket on here. Like, like I mentioned, it helps. It holds several tools for me. Uh, I keep a file in there just to touch the wedge up every now and then. Some paint pens. As I mark all my totes. I date them the month and the year when I'm splitting. And uh, maybe an extra pair of gloves or... Like I said, that hatchet, WD-40, I keep it on here for sure. Got a little wisp room, stuff like that. My my super splitter is like a King Ranch Lariat Ultra Limited all rolled into one. Not just anybody can have one like this. Comes with a, your glove holder, cup holder. <laughs> Here's a color match, red magnet. Not anybody can get that unless you got a Harbor Freight around and a then I guess you can you can get it. <laughs> but anyways, I did have, uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's barely, barely left. There's a little bitty notch right there. I had a nail and a piece of wood, and uh, I grind it down and filed it down. And it's about, it's about gone now. That wasn't any fault to the super splitter. That was just some tree service wood I've gotten. But uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you how I pick it up and move it around. Um... Uh, like I said, if if you're moving yours around on gravel or hard surface, it's no trouble at all to move around. When it gets wet down here and kind of muddy, these wood chips get soft. And it's a, it's a little more difficult, but it's not bad. I forgot to mention the wide production table, they call it. That's not the standard table. Uh, I would buy that all over again. I really like it for stacking wood up. It is a little uh, wider, of course. It's heavier to move around, but like like I said, it, it's not bad, and, and it's worth having the extra room. I think it's also safer to keep from wood from, from maybe falling off and things like that. So I would buy this super splitter all over again tomorrow if something happened tree fell on it whatever uh i'd buy another one and i would buy the j model i haven't really seen a need to for me for a hd model that was a big question i had when i was shopping nobody around here uh has a super splitter everybody uses anybody that splits wood uses the old hydraulic single wedge so this was kind of a leap for me to do this i did a lot of uh research what i could find and actually, I talked to uh, Mr. Joe at Ohio Woodburner, and uh, I put my order in the day before I talked to him, and he put my mind at ease on on buying this. Uh, and and thank you, Mr. Joe. I doubt you would ever see this, but if you do, I, I appreciate it. You've been you was helpful to me, and I and I'm sure glad that you gave me advice on this. But uh, anybody that looking at this, I wouldn't hesitate. Uh, I'm just a small-time firewood guy, but it's helped me. I'm, my time is limited. I have four kids, and uh, this time of year is filled with ball and dance competitions. And uh, <laughs> dance competitions for my oldest daughter, not me. And ball for my three young kids. I got a seven-year-old and uh, twins that are five. So when I get an hour or two, I can come down here and split. I need something fast and... Uh, and this is definitely it without spending a ton of money. So, anyways, here's some information. And uh, I hope it's helpful to y'all. Thank y'all again for watching. If you would, like and subscribe, comment if you want. See y'all.